everyone and welcome to Yarngasm. I'm Kristen and this is episode 264. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. And if you are a new viewer, welcome to the podcast. This is a podcast about mostly knitting and sewing and pretty much making all the things in Brooklyn, New York, where I'm from and I live with my husband Dennis and our adorable cat Bella. And as always, I'm so happy that you're taking some time out of your day to chat about those things with me. And I am back for another episode. Why wouldn't I be? <laughs> so anyway, it's always awkward starting off these episodes, but here I am nonetheless. It is a beautiful, not so cold day out in Brooklyn. Uh, very, very happy about that. Um, I have no real huge announcements this week other than Edinburgh Yarn Festival is coming up very quickly. Two more weeks, you guys, uh, and I will be off to Scotland again, and I cannot wait. But uh, before I forget my little spiel at the beginning of every episode, uh, you can follow me pretty much anywhere on social media uh, as Volan Vine. I'm most active on Instagram and Ravelry, and the best place to reach me, uh, if should you need to get in touch, is via email. You can reach me at contact at and and show notes for this episode and all other episodes can be found over uh, on the blog at www.yarngasmpodcast.com and like. So now that we've got that out of the way, I think we can get into the meat of the episode, uh, what I've been making this week. And I guess we should start with the elephant in the room. Uh, I finished my Zweig. My Zweig sweater is done. It's done. It's done. It's done. And you guys, I am so in love with it. Um, it's everything and more than I expected it to be. Um, this is a pattern by Caitlin Hunter of Boyland Knits. And the yarn, for the last time, you're, you're probably so happy not to hear it every week, <laughs> is my hand dyed yarn, Vine Yarns, uh, in this glorious mauve colorway. Uh, it is my Vine number nine colorway. And then the yoke is my Solstice colorway, and it's out of my Nouveau base, which is a superwash merino um, single ply base, uh, fingering weight, I should say. And I'm trying to think what I want to say about it other than I really love it. Uh, I'm generally not a pink person. I'm not sure if you gathered that by the wall, but I am a huge fan of mauve, so it's more, while it's pink, it airs on the side of mauve. So <laughs> um, I had to do a mauve swag and I really, really love it, you guys. I knit the small. Uh, I got gauge using the rec recommended needle size, so in case you're wondering about that. Uh, it fits perfectly. It's a little loose under under the armpit, but honestly, it does not bother me at all. Um, let me stand up so you can see. Uh, it has this really cute little X cable-y pattern going throughout the body, uh, and it seems like a very busy, busy sweater, you know, with all these design elements, with the lace, with the cable pattern, um, and some color work up here and below, uh, but for some reason it all just kind of goes together. It goes together so well, uh, and I, I'm a huge fan of Caitlin Hunter's patterns now, you guys. It's, she's, she's amazing. So, uh, highly recommend this pattern if you are thinking about knitting it yourself. Um, the sleeves too were a really, I don't know, I, I've never gravitated towards sleeves that kind of have like a little balloon. A balloon, is that what you call it? Like a mushroom, I guess? The sleeve just kind of abruptly decreases before you get into knitting the ribbing for the cup. So when you wear it, it kind of does this little mushroom. <laughs> mushroom arms, mushroom little effect. But the way I like to wear my sweaters is over my hand. So yeah, I mean. That's generally how I like to wear my sweater, so it all works out. I've been wearing this pretty much every single day since I since I photographed it and got it up on Ravelry in, in my projects, on my projects page, finished, it's done. Some of you are asking me about the pilling when it comes to wearing uh, sweaters knit out of a single ply yarn, and I have to say, um, for the most part, it's holding up really well. I don't see too much evidence of pilling so far. Um, uh, yeah, and I could definitely see knitting another sweater out of single ply yarn. I, I have to say, single ply yarn is by far my favorite base to knit with. It's just 
so, I don't know, it's cozy and it has this really nice halo and it blocks out really well. I should also mention that uh, I had been alternating skeins while knitting this, so uh, as you should when you knit garments out of any hand-dyed yarn, it's always safe to uh, alternate your skeins to minimize pooling or flashing, or if you have two sep skeins from two separate dye lots, it blends the two uh, together so th there's not like an abrupt, so you, it's not noticeable that you're knitting from two separate uh, dye lots. Um, and I, I learned that the hard way. If you've been with me for a while, you might remember the time I knit a Belmont cardigan out of some plucky knitter yarn. The yarn was beautiful. Nothing wrong with the yarn whatsoever. Pattern was great. Um, however, I didn't realize that I had purchased skeins from two separate dye lots. And, you know, as I was knitting it, I realized after I switched skeins that, yeah, there was indeed a obvious line where I realized that the skeins were just from two different dye lots and I was like, I'm fine with it, I can live with it. And then I got to Sleep Island and I'm like, I can't live with it. So <laughs> that unfortunately um, is getting the frog, but um, that's another story. Okay, moving along to works in progress. Um, living in a bag, which I'll talk more about in sewing, uh, <laughs> but this is a project bag that I whipped up. It is a drawstring bag and I will talk more about that in the sewing segment. But living in said bag is my Threep Muir by Isolde Teague. And I have to admit, I did not put any, after I finished the sweater, I took a little bit of a break. Um, I will be picking this up though this weekend and continuing uh, knitting on it. But I am on Sleeve Island and some needles came out, but because it is Shetland wool, it, it does not, I don't have to worry about the stitches slipping down. So. I'll take care of that later, but anyway, um, here's where I am. I made no real progress on it, still at the same point that I showed you last week. So, uh, but yes, this is the Threep Muir by Isolde Teague. Hoping to have it done uh, for EYF. I want this to be another Edinburgh Yarn Festival sweater that I wear to the festival. So hopefully this will, this will be done by the next time I record. I don't know, hopefully it's all stocking out at this point. So there's no excuse for it not to be done by the next time I record. Fingers crossed, we shall see. But anyway, uh, yarn is Jameson and Smith, uh, two ply jumper weight and Jameson Spindrift. Uh, this blue bit here is Jameson Spindrift, um, also two ply. And it's 100% Shetland wool and it's so, so, so lovely. I love it, can't wait to wear it. So that's where I am with that. Um, and then, <laughs> you know how I said my sock mojo kind of went out the window? Well, last weekend we went, uh, Dennis and I did a little road trip. We went to have dinner with my parents. So got in the car, realized I just, I kind of needed something uh, mindless to knit on, on the car ride so I can actually converse with Dennis and, you know, not have to focus too much on my knitting. So I cast on a sock uh, <laughs> and Here's where I am on it. And this is my hand-dyed yarn in the Dragon Tears colorway on the Blitz base. I don't know if you can see it, but there's some gold sparkle in there. And I love this colorway so much. It is so fun, you guys. Um, so yeah, it's a sock, nothing to write home about, not using any particular pattern. Uh, I'm just doing a two by two rib, uh, plain sock, and then I'm gonna do a fish lips kiss heel, which I've have been my go-to as of late. So um, go-to heel as of late. And then I have my little Stunning String stunning string Studio Kitty Stitch Marker go Progress Keeper on there. So uh, yeah, and I did, I will say that I did try knitting the nine inch circulars. I had these on nine inch circulars on, in the car ride and just, I was losing my mind. You guys, I had to switch back to, to Magic Loop. It was just too much for me. Um, I, again, I, I'm not giving up on it. it. I just wasn't in the frame of mind to sit there in a car with little tiny needles. And it was kind of dark too. So I, if I dropped a stitch, I couldn't see it. And uh, yeah, I just needed to be sane while knitting these. So anyway, that's where I am with that. Um, and then I, I, I did I did cast on something else because I kind of, I'm in the, I needed a new hat. So, and I was kind of on a, uh, a Caitlin Hunter kick and I had this yarn and it was speaking to me and I was like, okay, that would be a perfect cardamom coffee hat by Caitlin Hunter. Um, and here's where I am on it. So I'll try and, I'll try and pop a photo of the actual hat pattern here. So you really can't tell what this, what my progress looks like. So, um, but here's where I am on it. 
and let me talk about the yarn a little bit. Uh, so this really beautiful color here is um, the Woolen Rabbit in her Chocolate Chambord colorway. And if you are, <laughs> if you've been with me for a while, you might recall the time I cast on a Waiting for Rain shawl. Um, that got the axe. I just wasn't feeling the pattern. Uh, it's, be it's a beautiful pattern. It just wasn't for me. Um, and, and so it, it just got the frog. Um, and only recently <laughs> did I go through my uh, bin of scraps and I found the waiting for rain shawl still still in shawl form on the needles. Um, or no, I'm sorry. It was not on the needles. It was just, I had not frogged it. It was just there. So I took it and so I took the project out and I took it over to my ball winder and just ribbit, 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 caked it back up. Um, and it, and the yarn definitely had a lot of kinks in it. So I took it to, after I had done, finished, after I finished caking it up, I brought it downstairs to my reskeiner, reskeined it, soaked it, uh, and let it dry and then skein it up again. So that was, I have to say, that was the first time I've ever done that. Uh, ripped out a project and soaked the yarn. Um, yeah, and it, it works. It, you know, bounces back really nicely. It's a single ply yarn as well. Um, but this color is just, I have, I've, I got two skeins of it because it was just such a beautiful color. Um, uh, so yeah, that's the story behind this yarn, which is kind of a long story. But uh, yeah, the contrasting color is Woolen Boon in her Truffle Shuffle colorway. And this I purchased at Do You Knit uh, a while back. And it was part, uh, I was knitting this as part of my Sunset Highway pullover, but sadly that one is going to get the frog too. Another pattern by Caitlin Hunter. I just, I, I'm not feeling it. It's not the pattern for me. It's a little too... Flower power, I don't know why. I hate saying flower power, but it like the little scallops, I don't know if it's for me. It's not my style really. So I'm, I'm gonna call it and just say it's getting the ax. But um, the yarn is beautiful. Um, so I have quite a lot of it left over. I'm you know, gonna save some of that yarn. I, I, di I didn't even finish the yoke for that pattern. So um, yeah, but I still have quite a lot of truffle shuffle. Left. Anyway, it's playing really well with the chocolate jam board and I have to pick out a um, Another colorway to go with this because there's uh, another band of a, a third contrasting There's a third a, a second contrasting color with this pattern. So I haven't decided what colorway I'm gonna use for that um, That's still TBD, but so far this is kind of flying off the needles you guys again another great pattern because I've been wearing my Trekkie hat by Michelle Wong forever for ages um, It feels like forever, but I think I finished it last year and I've been wearing it non-stop and I really just kind of want like a nice hat pattern to switch on and off with because the Trekkie is the hat that I wear the most um, or the only hat that I have been wearing all winter and yeah I just want something to mix things up a bit so uh, yeah this was a really nice cast on uh, I still have to finish my Busta Beanie I don't know why I haven't finished that yet it's ridiculous it's it's a simple hat I'm almost done with it I really don't know why I'm not done with that um, yeah, they're just, I guess they're just certain patterns where you're, you know, they, some zoom, some are a little bit of a slog. Sometimes you just get over the colors as you're knitting them and you're like, and it doesn't excite you as much, even though the finished, you know, the finished object will. I really would like to know the psychology behind that because it's real, it's, it fascinates me. New project, new cast on. Uh, and yeah, so I think that is it for finished, op for finished objects and works in progress this week. So... It's gonna be a short episode, I think. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm gonna move along to sewing uh, because I do have some sewing to share with you. Okay, so you'll remember this from a few moments ago, but uh, this is a drawstring bag that I sewed up for myself. Uh, I saw this fabric on fabric.com and I fell in love with the combination and I was like, that would be such a cool project bag. So I made it sew, you guys. I <laughs> made a project bag. Um, this is a pattern that I drafted up. Um, I will say that I, well, I made two project bags actually. Um, this is, was my first incarnation of the of a draw. This was my first attempt at sewing a drawstring project bag, and I used a pattern from what was it? It's a free tutorial online, but she shows you how to make a drawstring bag from start to finish. It's from Color Order, InColorOrder.com. Uh, so it's a brilliant tutorial. It's all in pictures, and she shows you you know how to measure things out. Um, so I made. 
this and however it's perfect for like a sock project uh, or small tiny hat project uh, however I wanted something just a little bit bigger so I took the template from this and then it kind of played around with it and um, made some to my own dimensions my own preferred dimensions I guess and I actually added some more contrast fabric for the bottom um, to match the top and I ordered some I-cord um, I guess you can call this what is it? Um, piping, piping cord. And I purchased this on Amazon. So it was super cheap and came the next day and it's perfect for, for drawstring bags. So yeah, really fun to, to whip up and really quick too. Um, especially because no zippers are involved, but, uh, here's the inside. So I use some sprinkled, um, kind of, it reminds, it reminds me of like snow or a galaxy. I don't know, but it went really well with like the purple, um, thing so and yeah if you're wondering what these are these are it's kind of it's like a little witchy vibe to it it's got palm reading uh it shows like all the lines and what you know the lines on your palm mean you, know, you have like the heart line the lifeline the health line um and then you know whatever you know your zodiac sign you are and yeah so i thought it was really fun and this one's super huge i actually drafted another pattern to make one in a medium size so i'm gonna try whipping one of those up this weekend uh some of you expressed interest in me selling project bags i'm not saying no uh only because I don't know, these, these are fun to make and I definitely go through spurts where I really like making project bags. However, I feel like they are, they take time to make. I will say it takes about 45 minutes to make one bag. So, um, you know, I, as far as my shop is concerned, I, I, I need to focus on the yarn. Um, I, you know, but if the mood strikes, I might whip up a couple of bags for the shop. I'm not, again, I'm not saying no, but, uh, the mood has to strike and, um, it won't, if I do, it won't be a regular thing. Um, so in case you're wondering, um, yeah, but thumbs the breaks. So another thing that I whipped up, uh, Dennis, uh, in the morning, uh, when we wake up, our bedroom windows face where the sun rises. So in the morning, now that, you know, daylight savings is rolling around, um, we are getting <laughs> a lot more sun a lot earlier in the morning. So, uh, even though we have blackout windows, the sun finds ways to get uh, blackout curtains. The sun has ways of getting past that. I don't know. It finds a way to like leak in and then wakes us up super early. So, uh, for me, it doesn't, it doesn't bother me. I, I love waking up early, but Dennis likes to sleep in. So he's had, um, he's been using this pink eye mask that I got in a kit or something. I don't know. But anyway, um, I thought I would kind of, um, bro it up a little bit for him, <laughs> so so to speak. I found a, a free pattern online. I believe it's from, either, I'll post a link to it. I think Craftsy. I think it's a pattern from Craftsy, but they showed, uh, they give you a free template and you can make your own sleep mask. And I, I made some for him and but who wouldn't like shark fabric? Anyway, <laughs> I actually made a project bag for a friend out of this because, you know, I know she likes sharks. So anyway, I had some scrap fabric left over from that, made an eye mask for him. It has contrasting um, red fabric in the back. And I did use kind of uh, like loftier interfacing in between. And this, these were so quick to whip up, you guys. Um, I just used some elastic that I got around the corner from the 99 cent store. You cannot go wrong. And they make great gifts. So. I, I swear, I sewed this up in five minutes. Super easy. Um, so quick that I made one for myself. <laughs> so, but yeah, anyway, super quick, super fun, easy to make. make they make great gifts and uh, I could, I'm definitely going to be making more of these for, for presents. So <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm trying to think what else I want to say about them. Uh, yeah, I will post a link to the tutorial in the show notes. So in case any of you are, any of you want to make some for yourself. All right, so those are all my sewing makes this week, but uh, I did take advantage of another sale that Vogue Patterns and McCall's, some of the big, I, it's Butterick, McCall's, Vogue, Quick Sew, they're, they're one site. They have all those uh, pattern brands under one, one site. So uh, they were having a sale, so I took advantage of it and kind of went a little crazy, went a little crazy, but you know, when patterns are $2.99 each, you know, you can't just not take advantage of that. So um, I purchased quite a few. <laughs> and I don't know what, what possessed me, but I stocked up on 
um, some cosplay costumes because Halloween, I, if, if you watch the podcast, I'm big on Halloween costumes. I love making my own costumes. Um, they're a lot of fun and so why not? Um, so I got this one. It's a Regency costume, very, very Jane Austen. Uh, and you know, I could have a lot of fun with that. I don't know if I'm going to go as this for Halloween, but you know, I just figured it, it'll be fun to have in, in my stash should I want to go as that one year. We'll see. Uh, but this one, I could totally see going as for next Halloween. Um, yeah, I $2.99, you guys. Outlander. I could go as Claire Fraser. Yeah. So anyway, um, or, or I, I can make this for Edinburgh. I could show up to the marketplace <laughs> in this outfit. I would not do that. Um, I don't know, maybe I would. This was on the Vogue site. Uh, this is by Isaac Mezarai. Mezarahi? I can never pronounce his last name. And I thought this was really pretty. I believe there are some pleats or pin tucks involved, uh, which pin tucks, uh, pleats I'm still getting the swing of, and pin tucks I have not tried yet. So that's next on the bucket list when it comes to sewing. But I thought this was really pretty. So I got that. Um, and then also from Vogue, I got this pattern. Uh, and I believe Jacqueline from Brooklyn Knit Folk got the same, uh, made the same pattern at some point. And I just love like simple A-line circle skirts uh, with, you know, like a simple princess seam. Um, so I got that. And then very similar, I got this one by McCall's. So very similar shape to that. Just so instead, of, there's like a V, a V neck neckline. Um, with some, with some darts, bus darts. Uh, so that's exciting. This one, I don't really know what I was thinking. Um, I don't know if this is really my style. I guess I just kind of like the construction of it. It's something different than what I usually go for. Uh, so there's that, but it, you can see it better in the line drawing. It has kind of like this straight front piece over here and then it has like this interesting kind of like 1920s art deco um detail at the side if you're familiar if you've if you've ever watched um what do you call it uh Downton Abbey I forgot her name I forgot her name but there's one one episode where they're wearing these dresses and it's you know flapper dresses and they have like these fishtail fins kind of coming out at the side I don't know it looked really pretty so um that's what it reminded me of go figure so it'll be nice to have in my collection of patterns to dip into and then this one i'm really not sure what i was thinking of um <laughs> but i guess i kind of like the construction of it's something that i'm i'm open to trying i've i've never been one for wearing puff sleeves i guess i really just liked this part and the sleeves i can always omit or you know who knows whatever it's very maria von trap but you know <laughs> we'll see. Um, so that's what I got from, uh, that, that's my pattern haul. Uh, so yeah, uh, I will of course link to those in the show notes in case you want to get them for yourself. Um, so that is it for sewing. I am going to move along to shop update because I will be having a shop update tomorrow, Friday, uh, March 2nd at 7 p.m. Eastern time. In the shop, I will have <laughs> some dirty on purpose. Uh, I've been getting a lot of requests for dirty on purpose lately, so uh, I'm having it in the shop again. Uh, so here is on Nouveau, here is on Footsie, and then I will have some Solstice. Again, here it is on Footsie, and here it is on Nouveau, and then I will also have some more Enjoy the Silence. Here it is on Smitten DK, and here it is on Nouveau. So I will I will have uh, Smitten DK, I will have Nouveau, my singles base, uh, uh, Volca, which is my uh, fingering merino nylon cashmere, and then I will also have Blitzed, uh, my gold Selena, and Footsie, my BFL Superwash Merino Sock Yarn. So in case you are curious. Uh, and here is Taro, uh, my new colorway that I came up with last week. It was going to be a strange brew, but I fell in love with this colorway, guys. And uh, I just want to say thank you to um, a, I'm so sorry I'm blanking on your name, but a lovely podcast viewer uh, suggested the name Taro, and I thought it was perfect. So Taro it is. Uh, and here it is, it is on Smitten DK and Blitzed. Um, and then I will have more Siren. Here it is. This is also a newer colorway that I came up with. And then I will also have some Strange Brews. I haven't named this yet, so but they will be Strange Brews. And Strange Brews are one-of-a-kind colorways. I did not write down the formula. 
Uh, so they are one-offs, one time only. <laughs> so uh, I will have some of that. I think we're gonna name this one Grouch Grouchy or Groucho. I don't know. It seems very grouchy, like a very grouchy, moody colorway. So uh, I was having a little fun with that. Um, yeah, and then I think that is it. Yeah, and I'm gonna be dyeing up some more. Obviously, I'm gonna be dyeing up some more colors uh, today and tomorrow. So uh, I am definitely going to have some more dragon tears. So keep your eye out for that. And I'm not sure what else I'm gonna have in the sh in the shop. Maybe I'll do some more strange brews. We'll see. Um, but. Yeah, if you want to find out, uh, as always, what colorways are going to be in the shop, if you don't tune into the podcast every week uh, or you know follow my Instagram feed, you can always sign up for the newsletter uh, by going to my website, uh, valenvineyarns.com, scrolling all the way down to the bottom and signing up. And every week uh, before an update, uh, usually hope like, the the day before the update, I send out a newsletter letting you guys know. Um, when uh, the what colors are going to be in the update and what bases and other important tidbits of information. Um, and speaking of other tidbits of information, uh, my something wicked mitts, a fingerless mitten pattern that I designed, is is going to be released very soon. I'm aiming for next week, so uh, keep an eye out on my Instagram feed uh, and Ravelry, and I will let you guys know as soon as it's published, but uh, it's currently being um, tech edited, and the final touches are being put on the pattern, but my test knitters love the pattern, so thank you so much to all my wonderful test knitters uh, for for taking these for a test drive. Uh, I got such great feedback, and they really enjoy the pattern, and Guys, I love these. I've been wearing these like every single day. Uh, the, the, the pattern is called uh, Something Wicked. Uh, they're fingerless mitts and they have some really, it has a really intricate um, cable motif that, yeah, I just, I love it. So, um, and the yarn is My Hand Eyed Yarn uh, Smitten DK in the Grim colorway. And I've actually got to dye up some more of this colorway soon. Um, but yeah, I love these. They keep me nice and warm and my fingers free so I can doodle around on my um my cell phone sometimes so <laughs> anyway um so yeah hopefully these will be published by next week i know i was kind of aiming for before march but February was a short month so it totally flew by um and i wanted to make sure all the kinks were ironed out with the pattern so yay um so anyway that is it for now uh i am gonna move along to blather where i chat about what's been going on in my life should you care to stick around if not i will see you next week happy knitting thank you so much for tuning in and let's get babbling <laughs> okay so what's been going on in my life um honestly nothing much to write home about it's been pretty quiet on the western front um i guess i'll talk about what podcasts i've been listening to uh other than well as far as knitting podcasts go um if you've been following the podcast, you might know that I have been trying to learn how to speak German. And I, a lovely podcast viewer reached out to me, left a comment in the last episode, I believe. I think her podcast is called Cat and White, and it's completely in German. Uh, it's spoken in German, and uh, she suggested, if I'm still trying to learn German, to check out her podcast because, you know, it's it's entirely in, it's entirely spoken in German. and. I sure enough twist my arm. I was like, okay, yeah, because uh, funny enough, uh, the other day uh, my Rosetta Stone account uh, <laughs> auto renewed and charged me like a lot of money to like reach. And I was like, okay, no, I initially signed up and had gotten a sale on a really great uh, discount on when I initially signed up for it. Stuck with it for about I don't know, like four months, and then I'm still wearing my mittens. Um, I just gave up on it. It just didn't really work into my schedule and I wasn't putting enough time into it. So um, I contacted them and you know, thankfully they gave me a refund, but yeah, it, it, it wasn't a system that was working for me. So anyway, I prefer actually immersing myself in uh, German spoken podcasts and audiobooks and everything. So I find I pick up a lot more on that and her podcast is really really good you guys um, And even if you don't speak German, it's like she it's so well produced. She's so wonderful to watch um, I have to catch up on some of her other episodes, but um, I'm sorry. I'm totally blanking on your name um, I will put all the information in the down bar, but she's just she works on the most beautiful projects um and I'm assuming she said some really nice things about me <laughs> because she mentioned the box of socks. Um, 
but you know thank you so much um but yeah her projects are really beautiful and i've just had i've been having so much fun uh when i did watch her podcast it just it was really fun just to hang out with her for an hour uh and just it's really she's very relaxing and i was picking up on certain you know I, there's certain words i understand so I think that method works for me where I'm just like sitting there hanging out listening to things that I actually talk about uh, you know and that's a really great way to pick up so pick up the language so um, definitely check out uh, her podcast um, and again links below and what else have I been listening to Emily of uh, slow fashion rebel uh, who works for me once a week uh, she suggested um, what is it love to sew uh, which is an audio podcast and it was also new to me so I you know she was hanging out and like listening to it while I was working and you know I was going in in and out of the uh, the back room and I was catching bits of the podcast I'm like oh I want to listen to that so I popped in my headphones and listened to it while I worked um, and it's a really good up it's a really good podcast you guys especially if you love sewing um, it's called love to sew but they interviewed uh what, what's her name roxanne i believe her name or rochelle i think it's rochelle from uh home row fiber co and oh my gosh you guys what an awesome interview uh it was it felt like a long interview i think it's only like it, it's it was about 45 minutes to 50 minutes long but so much information uh great information uh especially like if you you are a craft business owner and anyway it's just really inspiring and just hearing her story just a really, really good podcast. Highly recommend it. Um, and Unladylike is another podcast that I've been listening to, another audio podcast. Uh, if you are familiar with uh, Stuff Mom Never Told You, uh, the, ho the former hosts of that podcast, Kristen and Caroline, uh, they no longer do the Stuff Mom Never Told You podcast. They kind of branched out on their own and started Unladylike. And it's another feminist, uh, very feminist driven uh, podcast where they talk about um, important issues and you know some fun issues also but um, you know they definitely do there's a lot more meat to uh, what they talk about um, whereas stuff mom never told you is pretty much just like factoids and you know still informative I love that podcast even the new new the new hosts but um, you know it's definitely kind of like kind of like the topics that they cover are very surface um, it doesn't really dive down there's like a lot of information and they can't really squeeze the meat of that stuff into one episode. I totally understand that, but um, still a really wonderful podcast. I also recommend that, but check out on Ladylike. It's, you know, I really love what they're doing with it. So uh, yeah, that that's pretty much what I've been listening to lately. So I'm gonna leave it there. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for tuning in as always. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful weekend full of knitting and making and hope to see you next week. Bye.